<laughs> Good evening and welcome to Angels, Fairies and Witches. I'm your host Michelle. And I'm Laura. She's back. <laughs> We're back. We missed you. We had some scheduling issues. So we were gone pretty much the whole month of November. Um, but we're back. Along, along with Hurricane Sandy issues. Yes, that's something I want to start the program off with. Um, you know, obviously we're seeing here in Queens, and everybody in Queens was affected. Um, but really, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, no one really escaped this. Um, I want to thank certain people. We have a, a viewer out there, Alfreda. And she called me a few days after the hurricane because we always talk about going to Rockaway Beach in the summer. And she was afraid that we actually lived there, and um, she was concerned. So I was happy to tell her that, um, no, we were safe. But our beach, our beloved beach, is gone. Yep. The, uh, from several sections are completely gone, but from uh, the spot that we really enjoyed from Beach 86th Street to 126th Street is gone. The boardwalk is gone, and they're talking about hoping to build some sort of temporary walk to the concession stand. But And I feel so selfish saying that, you know, our beach, our, our place of leisure enjoyment for the summer is gone. But what about all those people that lost their homes, that lost everything? Everything. It's How could we spiritually make sense of this? Because a lot of people ask me that question. Why me? Why did it happen to me? Well... We know that everything happens for a reason, so... They um, are going to want to behead you if well, you go down there with that. Well, everything does Yeah, I have power, I have a house, you don't, but everything happens for a reason. Uh, we owe our audience better than that. Okay, so what do you have in mind? I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, no, I, I've been doing a lot of thinking about this, okay? You know how, um, I hope this show airs before... December 21st, but I'm sure a lot of you out there have heard of this Mayan prophecy um, where they're, you know, the end of the world on the 21st. I mean, technically, the Mayans did not prophesize it as being the end of the world. It's just that's where their calendar ended. I mean, maybe they just got freaking tired of making these calendars after thousands of years and said, ah, let them figure it out themselves. Point I'm trying to make is this. When the hurricane first hit, there was such a tremendous outpouring of kindness for one another. Love thy neighbor. What can I do for you? How can I help you? And it was a beautiful thing to witness. People did heroic things, amazing things. But then after about a week went by and, and people had no power, and then there was the whole problem with having no gas, people did start turning on one another. You know, there was fights breaking out in lines at gas stations and people hoarding as much food as they could. So I think maybe Sandy was meant to be a lesson. I don't think the world's going to end December 21st, but I do think that's going to be sort of a shift in karmic energy and that we have the opportunity to come together as a people or destroy ourselves. Absolutely. So maybe Sandy was the lesson? Could very well be. Sounds... sounds it Sounds res- good, doesn't it? It resonates. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like I know what I'm talking about here. Um, also, just on par with Hurricane Sandy, uh, there are still um, plenty of, of donations that are needed in terms of money, in terms of food, in terms of clothing, really worthwhile charities. So, you know, nothing feels better than helping somebody else. And it is the holiday season, so these people have nothing. So this is the time to for all of us to open our hearts and our wallets you know what I thought was amazing too I have this entertainer I know he watches the show his name is Phil McGuire he's excellent excellent and he has I'm sorry he had a gorgeous condo right on the beach basically where we used to go and um, I saw him a couple weeks after the hurricane and we were talking and he just had nothing. It was all gone. And yet he was still grateful that he was alive, that he had breath in his lungs, that his family was unharmed. So just to have nothing and and still have gratitude is an amazing lesson. Yeah, there were some wonderful stories 
of people doing heroic things during the hurricane as well. Mm -hmm. So it was really heartwarming to see that that it wasn't just about themselves. That there was a, a gentleman named Peter Fadola who 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 went to just check on his house and ended up saving 200 lives. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So it was pretty incredible. I just think sometimes um, it pisses me off. Well, a lot of things piss me off. <laughs> uh, that people forget a little too quickly. Because shortly after things started a little bit getting back to normal, and particularly on Thanksgiving Day, there was so much talk about how people are grateful for the very little they have. And then the next day was... F in Black Friday, and all these fools are out in stores and gimme and buy more. And yeah. I mean, I hate to get all preachy and, and moral police on your ass, but <laughs> come on, people, remember the simple, basic things. Yep, yep. Just to to think about one another and be kind to one another, and you know, don't think so much about what kind of bargains I can get now and. You know, um, this being the holiday season now as a, a witch, the season, my season of Yule starts on December 21st. We hope. What do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> um, and it really extends throughout the, the wintertime period. Well, um, the 21st is actually the winter solstice. Really? I had no <laughs> idea. Look at her educating me on something I already know. Shut up. Anyway... <laughs> Um, here's just a few nifty little ideas that you folks can do at home to bring about good karma, okay? Do you have a friend who's lonely, a neighbor who's elderly, um, some sort of good deed doing? You know, if you're healthy and you have, you know, enough strength or, you know, a husband who's strong enough to do the shoveling, <laughs> then help a neighbor as well. Okay. Not the husband. Not the husband. <laughs> <laughs> that um, clear. You know, give to charity. Donate some of your time. I wanted to look at this. This time it's me with the cue cards. Could you imagine? Can you imagine? And you're sitting there flying by the seat of your pants. <laughs> now, these are just a few important things I wanted to bring up. Um, there's a church. Wow. First I have cue cards. Now I'm talking about a church. Maybe the world is ending. <laughs> <laughs> um Anyway, this church is in Flushing. It's called St. Andrew's of something? Avellino. Avellino. St. Andrew's of Avellino. And they have this program. It starts the day after Thanksgiving, and it goes till springtime, where they house, I assume in the church basement, up to 10 families uh, a week. I think it's like Monday through Saturday. They get bussed in from shelters. And so, you know, they could always use clothing, linen, things like that. But what I really want to do is they also take donations of home-cooked meals. Now, you know, think about it. A homeless family at Christmas time, God, throw in like a crippled puppy and you've got the worst scenario ever. So I can cook up a storm. I could make a big tray of lasagna with some sides. This may be their only opportunity for safety, warmth, and shelter. So maybe you'd like to join me out there. Sounds I think it's good, a wonderful right? idea. Absolutely. Look at the bird. <laughs> ah. <laughs> um, okay, I wanted to bring about the fact that there are no mosquitoes out here today. Yay. Are my teeth chattering? A you know, <laughs> little nippy. Um, I wanted to discuss uh, Yule time and some of the fun factoids and um, about that. But there's just something, it seems a little off the topic, but it needs to be said, okay? I gotta tell you this story. This is yet another thing that pisses me off. Body image, okay? <clears throat> We've all seen the models on the magazines, airbrushed, might I add. At my job, here's an example that I think a lot of you will be able to relate to. There's a woman who was heavy, okay? So about a year and a half ago, she went on Weight Watchers, which anything that I've ever heard, that's really the healthiest way to do it. It's watch your portion, control, and walk. And 
it took her about a year, year and a half, but she ended up losing 80 pounds, which is quite an accomplishment. But here's how if you step back, you could see all these different things happening. As she was losing the weight, people were encouraging her, and for the first time in her life, she started to feel good about herself, and that's great. Then people would be asking her questions about Weight Watchers, because they do this thing with points. You gotta count this, count that. God, that wouldn't work for me. And then once she got down to a, a thin, slender size, the craziest thing happened. All of a sudden, people were asking her opinion on everything. Child rearing. What kind of car to buy? Should I refinance my home? And it really struck a chord with me because simply because she was thinner, everyone started to have idol worship for her. She improved her body image, therefore she became a smarter person. An expert on everything? Expert That's on such everything. crap, okay? Let me tell you. Um, I think society today, I've said this in other episodes, but maybe about 100 years ago, bodies like ours were Rubenesque. This is what men wanted, and why? Because if we could have this extra poundage, that meant we were wealthy. We could eat bonbons all day long, and if we had pale skin, that also meant that we didn't work in the fields. We could sit around leisurely enjoying ourselves. If, on the other hand, we were thin and tan, which is today's ideal, that meant we were probably a peasant and had to work in the field, and probably had very little food. So, can we all just stop it, please? Really start looking at what's inside of a person. Bodies can change. Wayne Dyer said it best himself in one of his symposiums. <laughs> Blank. You were with me. We saw this. Yes. No recollection? Yes. <laughs> this is why I do the talking, really. <laughs> just sit there and zone out. Oh, look pretty. <laughs> speaking of zoning out, um, if somebody wrote about us in a, a letter to the editor. We were in Flushing Times or the courier or something. It was a fan of ours that said, um, you know, with all these crappy reality shows and, and whatnot, why not put on something that really makes you feel good and is entertaining? And she cited our program. And she said that I was this uh, wild ride through spirituality and um, that you were content to sit there and play the straight man. <laughs> yep. Yes, indeed. That's because you keep going from one topic to the next to the next. I never really know how to, <laughs> how to follow you gotta, most you of know, the time. <laughs> you got to be like a Marine, adapt, overcome, make love, not war, and okay. not to me. Okay. Well, yes. <laughs> now I'm really confused. Where were we? Wayne uh, Dyer. Wayne Dyer. Okay, he did Body um, image. a symposium. She was with me, so I'll tell the audience, and apparently I'll tell you again as well. <laughs> That he said, somebody, something was asked of him, what is truth? And the answer to that is truth is something that never changes, okay? Our bodies change from when we're infants, teenagers, in our 20s, 30s, 40s, and above. <laughs> um, so the one thing that doesn't change is our soul. So enough talk about weight loss, weight gain, and another thing... Why am I so, like, agitated today? I'll tell you why. Because we're just coming out of the Mercury retrograde, so I'm still a little pissy. Plus, we had full moon energy. Um, yeah. It's like when they ask celebrities their opinion on stuff, like, like politics. Why? Because they're attractive and... And popular, so they must know what's right and wrong. I just, I would really like us collectively as a people to look beyond the body image because it doesn't last. And, and when you're focusing on body image, it's ego. It's your ego that's controlling you. Yep. And you really have to not listen to ego. You yep. have to listen to, the, to your soul, to your God spirit inside you. Speaking of ego, just to finish up with my story of the Weight Watchers woman at work that lost all that weight and how everyone treated her, you know put her on a pedestal she was a very nice person and sweet and kind always helped me out with you know the patients and I don't know which came first the chicken or the egg but now she's a thin person and the world's biggest bitch and no one can get mad at me because I'm not naming names but if any of you work at my nursing home you know who I'm talking about now why did that have to happen why couldn't she retain her sweetness she changed her body she got healthier she got the body she always wanted but ego. why did she have to become a jerk? Ego. 
ego did it all. Ego stepped in and said, wow, you you can do anything. You're better than You're everybody better than else. You're everybody else. You're smarter. You, yeah. Well, needless to say, and I'm sorry, but this is just human nature, everybody at work is just waiting for her to start putting the pounds on again. Isn't that a shame? She kind of did it to herself. So, am I done soapboxing? Is there anything else that annoys me? Um... Anything you want to say? No, of course not. Of course not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> pardon me. I thought we would discuss some fun uh, Yule topics and where things got their origin from. So, do you know why we have Christmas bells? No. Let me tell you. The Christmas bells were originally meant... Now... Here's the thing, people. All these Yule time Christmas spells and, and facts all had pagan roots. Yes, that's right, Mom. Pagan roots. <laughs> if you ever watch my show, you know my mother's very Catholic. Pagan roots. All right, so the bells were originally um, supposed to drive out the demons of the dark. And when the Christian Bible came out, there's some passage somewhere in there, that says, uh, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And since the tinkling of the bells kind of fit that bill, that's why they were incorporated into Christmas time. So Santa Claus can't possibly be pagan. Ah, but he is. Um, actually, I had two things about Santa Claus. Okay, well, first of all, Santa Claus the way we envision him, uh -huh. actually came from the Coca-Cola company. They were the one that really put him in the red suit and the white beards. But the roots harken back even further to a Dutch saint, Saint Nicholas, who used to wear Jolly old Saint Nick. the red vestments of a bishop. Okay. Um, another possibility in pagan times is that um, there was Odin who was the elf king and he if you read history he had a lot of the magical abilities that then got assigned to Santa Claus um, jolly and had his little I was gonna say band of merry men but I think that's Robin Hood yeah elves um, magical could could fly through the air could I don't know if he could make toys but that's one of the, um, what's that word I can never pronounce? Well, there's a bunch of them. Archetype? Archetype? Yeah. Archetype. You Archetype. It. Okay. So that, Santa, that um, Odin, the elf king, was the archetype for Santa Claus. Nice. So. Hit me with your best shot. So what about uh, sending, uh, delivering gifts to children around the world with his uh, sleigh and his reindeer? Okay. There's a few possibilities. Possibility number one is not here. Oh, God, now I know how you feel. <laughs> my cards, my cards. Okay, it's also possible it was derived from Freya, who is a Norse gift-giving goddess, and she would fly through the air, and she, her, well, it wasn't a sleigh, but it was something like that, would be pulled by stags. So that's kind of how then we got to the reindeer. It was really the stags from Freya's gift giving. It wasn't a sleigh. Whatever. Any more questions? Uh, so reindeer, how did how did we come come about having didn't I just answer that? Yeah, You're not even paying attention. No. I hope you guys are watching more than you. No, I, I just said I, no, no. Freya's sleigh was pulled by a bunch of stags. The stags right. became the reindeer. Okay, and this, I, I guess basically I'm getting around to Santa's two reindeer. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. See what she said, Santa's two reindeer. We know he has many more than that. See, so I really was hoovering around a point. I was listening. Bring it in for a landing next time, a <laughs> little quicker. Santa originally just had two reindeer. One was Donner, whose name meant thunder, and one was Blitzen, whose name meant lightning, as he flies through the sky. Thunder and lightning. Thunder and lightning. Very nice. Got a question about the candy cane? Oh, yeah. Where did that come from? 
me because, well, all right, look, we didn't practice this as usual. Okay, the candy cane came from um, this gentleman in Italy in 17 something. Something. And he was a very religious man, very devout Catholic. You know, I'm going for the jugular on this one, folks. <laughs> anyway, he was a confectionery. He was a candy maker. And so he painstakingly took um, peppermint, Was often goes back to pagan times because both the warmth and the coolness of the winter and the warmth of the heat from, like, fireplaces. Does it have a healing property, too, peppermint? I think it does. Perhaps. I think... Uh, Good for the tummy. And clears, I think it clears your sinuses as well. And headaches, I think it's good for headaches. Want to know where it came from? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yep, she's back. <laughs> anyway, in order to show his devotion for Jesus and the Catholic Church, he painstakingly took peppermint candy and made a J. Now, it was white to symbolize the virgin birth, and it was covered in red to symbolize the blood that was on the cross. And so he gave it out to all these Catholic churches, and he was so proud of it. Well, what did they do with it, which I think is a little bit funny? They started giving these out on midnight mass to children as a treat for good behavior. And so, of course, the kids just held it by the hook and were sucking on it. So even though this was meant as his painstakingly religious devotion to Jesus, it became a candy treat for kids and good for the tummy. And kept them quiet, probably. <laughs> Oh, psychic ability. You're going to now ask me about mistletoe. <laughs> it's the only way we're going to get through this show. <laughs> Either that or I give her my cue cards. Um, okay, mistletoe was known to heathens as the semen of the gods. Not making this up. Well, you know, it kind of looks that way. So anyway, the story goes something like this. There was a Norse goddess named Frigg. And she had a son named Balder. And she loved her son very, very, very much. She never wanted anything, any harm to come to him. So she made a pact with the four elements that no harm would come to her son. However, Loki, the god of mischief, was up to his old tricks and fashioned an arrow and gave it to Balder's blind brother and said, go have fun. Needless to say, the blind brother shoots the brother, Balder. He dies. His mother Frigg comes over and is crying so much, so much, that her tears actually bring him back to life. And she then declares that um, the mistletoe is a symbol of luck, love, and promise. Is it just me or is that a little creepy? Yeah, it is kind of creepy. I mean, creepy. people make out under the mistletoe, <laughs> but it's got its origins and like a mother's love for her son. What is that, like the Oedipus or the Electra complex? Okay, so... I don't like that factoid. Why did it become a symbol of people kissing? Because when mistletoe? she declared that, sorry, this is a little too close to the neckline. When she declared that um, the mistletoe would be a symbol of luck, love, and promise, that when people would kiss under the mistletoe, they would kind of be inviting her blessings. So, uh, still kind of creepy. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, so what other mm. uh, what other factoids, factoids do I have do you here? Have for us? Candy cane. The North Pole. Ah. Okay, the North Pole. Uh, well, first of all, Santa has to live somewhere. Let's face it. Um, the fact that historians believe that the fact that it's located in North America has no significance, um, but it's really supposed to symbolize the life and death circle of life that's never ending and by the way circle of life that's where you all get the wreaths from ripping us off again just saying <laughs> so it's kind of the the duality um that in the north pole it's so cold and so barren and nothing could survive there yet the happiest kindest jolliest man on earth not only lives there but thrives there nice i like that i thought so very nice. Uh, that may be all the interesting factoids that I have for Yule. Yule. Oh, mm. also, one more thing. Did you know that animals can speak on Christmas Eve? But 
Oh, I did read that. I did read that but somewhere. But to hear them is considered unlucky. Unlucky, so. right. Right. But why? Why is it considered unlucky if you hear them? Hell, I don't have all the answers. I don't know. Because <laughs> I think unless you're Dr. Doolittle, you probably shouldn't be going around hearing animals talk. Yeah, so... so Although you ever get drunk enough that you think you can hear them? <laughs> I'm sure you have. <laughs> <laughs> so, so... Somebody had to hear him to know that animals talk. So whoever it was... Uh, it's a superstition. I don't know if it's rooted in anything. Wasn't very lucky, were they? Now, our producer's either giving us the peace sign or telling us two minutes. So <laughs> let's wrap up this episode. We've got a lot more fun things coming up. I'm going to show some Yuletide spells. And good to have you back. Thanks. It's good to be back. So until next time, uh, for Angels, Fairies, and Witches, this is Michelle saying thank you for inviting us into your home. Don't forget to uh, call us or email us at angelsfairieswitches at gmail.com. And if you pick up Creative Magazine, which Creations. is... Creations. Close. <laughs> Creations Magazine, you'll find an advertisement for me on page something or other. Page something or other. All right, say goodbye. Farewell. <laughs> Good to have you back. Thanks. <laughs>